Chapter 15, how to outwit the six goals of fear. Take invention of yourself as you read this closing chapter and find out how many of the ghosts are standing in your ways. Before you can put any portion of this philosophy into success, use your mind must be prepared to receive it. The preparation is not difficult. It begins with a study, analyze and understanding of three enemies which you shall have to clear out. These are indecision, doubt, and fear. The sixth sense will never function while these three negative or any of them remain in your mind. The member of this unholy trio are closely related. Where one is found, the other two are close at hand. Indecision is the seeding, seedling of fear. Remember this, you can read indecision, crystallize into doubt, the two blend and become fear. The blending process often is slow. This is one reason why these three enemies are so dangerous. The germinate and grow without their presence being observed. The reminder of this chapter describe an end which must be attained before the philosophy as a whole can be put into practical use. It also analyzes a condition which has but lately reduced huge numbers of pupils to poverty and it states a truth which must be understood by all who accumulate riches, whether measured in terms of money or a state of mind, so far greater value than money. The purpose of this chapter is to turn the spotlight of attention upon the cause and the cure of the six basic fear before we can master an enemy. We must, we must know its name, its habits, and its place of abode. As you read, analyze yourself carefully, determine which, if any of the six common fear have attached themselves to you. Do not be deceived by the habit of these subtle enemies. Sometimes they remain hidden in the subconscious mind where they are difficult to locate and still more difficult to eliminate. There are six basic fears with some combination of which every human suffers at one tune or another. Most people are fortunate if they do not suffer from the Tar six name in the order of their most common appearance they are the fear of poverty the fear of criticism the fear of ill health at the bottom of most of one's worries the fear of loss of love of someone the fear of old age the fear of death all other fears are of minor importance they can be grouped under these six headings the prevalence of these fear as a curse to the world runs in cycles for almost six years while the depression was on. We plundered in the cycle of fear of poverty during the world war. We were in the cycle of fear of death just following the war. We were in the cycle of fear of ill health as evidenced by the epidemic epidemic of disease which spread itself all over the world. Fear are nothing more than states of mind. One state of mind is subject to control and direction. Physician, as everyone knows, are less subject to attack by disease than ordinary laymen. For the reason that physician do not fear disease, physician without fear of he or hesitation has been known to physical contact hundreds of people daily who were suffering from such contagious disease as smallpox without becoming infected. Their immunity, their immunity against the disease consisted largely if not solely in their absolute lack of fear, man can create nothing which he does not first conceive in the form of an impulse of thought. Following this statement comes another of a still greater importance, namely man's thought impulses begins immediately to translate themselves 
into their physical equivalent whether those thoughts are voluntarily or involuntary thought impulses which are picked up through the ether by mere chance thoughts which have been released by other minds may determine one's financial business professional or social destiny just as surely as do the thought impulses which one create by intent and design we are here lying the foundation for the presentation of a fact of great importance to the person who does not understand why some pupil appears to importance to this person who we are here lying the foundation for the presentation of a fact of great importance to the person who does not understand why some pupil appears to be lucky while others up while others of equal or great ability training experience and brain capacity seem destined to ride with mis misfortune this fact may be explained by the statement that every human being has the ability to completely control his own mind and with this control obviously every person may open his mind to the trapped thought impulses which are being released by other brains or close the doors tightly and admits only through impulses of his own choice nature has this endowed indeed man with absolute control over but one thing and that is thought this fact coupled with the additional fact that everything which man creates begins in the form of a thought leads one very near to the principle by which fear may be mastered if it is true that all thoughts has tendency to clothe itself in its physical equivalent and this is true beyond any reasonable room for doubt it is equally true that thought impulses of fears and poverty cannot be translated into terms of courage and financial gain the pupil of america begin to think of poverty following the wall street crash in 1929 slowly but surely that mass thought was crystallize into its physical equivalent which was known as a depression this had to happen it is in conformity with the laws of nature the fear the fear of poverty there can be no compromise between poverty and riches the two roads that leads to poverty and riches travel in opposite direction if you want riches you must refuse to accept any circumstance that leads towards poverty the word riches is here used in its broadest sense meaning financial spiritual mental and material states the starting point of the path that leads to riches is desire in chapter 1 you receive full instruction for the proper use of desire in this chapter on fear you have complete the instruction for preparing your mind to make practical use of desire here then is the place to give yourself a challenge which all definitely determine in chapter 1 you receive full instruction for the proper use of desire in chap in this chapter on fear you have complete instruction for preparing your mind to make practical use of desire here then is the place to give yourself a challenge which will definitely determine how much of this philosophy you have absorbed here is the point at which you can turn profit and foretell accurately what the for future holds in store for you if after reading this chapter you will willing to accept poverty you may as well make your mind to receive poverty this is one decision you cannot avoid
if you demand riches, determine what form and how much will be required to satisfy you, you know the road that leads to riches. You have been given a road map which, if followed, will keep you on that road. If you neglect to make the start or stop before you arrive, no other, no one will be, will be to blame but you. This responsibility is, is your new alibi will save you from accepting the responsibility if you now fail or refuse to de demand riches for life because the acceptance call for but one thing. Accidentally, the only thing you can control and that is a state of mind. A state of mind is something that one assumes it cannot be purchased, it must be created. Fear of poverty is a state of mind, nothing else, but it is sufficient to destroy one's chance of achievement in any undertaking, a truth which became painfully evident during the dis depression. This fear paralyzes the faculty of reason, destroys the faculty of imagination, kill off self-reliance, undermines enthusiasm, discourage initiative, leads to uncertainty of purpose, encourages procrastination, wipes out enthusiasm, and makes self-control an impossibility. It takes the charm from one's personality, destroys the possibility of accurate thinking diverts concentration of effort it masters persistence turns the willpower into nothingness destroy ambition becloud the memory and invites failure in every conceivable form it kills love and assassinates the finer emotion of the heart discourage friendship and invite disaster in a hundred forms least Lead, lead to sleep, sleeplessness, misery, and unhappiness, and all this despite the uh, obvious truth that we live in a world of overabundance of everything the heart could desire, with nothing standing between us and our desire, excepting lack of a definite purpose. The fear of poverty is, without doubt, the most destructive of the six basic fear. It has been placed at the heart of the list because it is the most difficult to master. Considerable courage is required to state the truth about the origin of this fear and still greater courage to accept the truth after it has been stated. The fear of poverty grew out of men inherent tendency to prey upon his fellow men's economically nearly all animals lower than men are motivated by instinct by their capacity to think is limited therefore they prey upon one another physically men in this in his superior sense of intuition with the capacity to think and to reason does not eat his fellow man bodily he gets more satisfaction out of eating him financially man is so avariciously that every conceivable law has been passed to safeguard him from his fellow man of all the ages of the world of which we know anything the age in which we live seems to be one that is outstanding because of man's money madness a man is considered less than the dust of the earth unless he can display a fat bank account but if he has money never mind how he acquired it he is a king or a big shot he is above the law he rules in politics he dominates in business and the whole world about him those in respect which he passes Nothing brings men so much suffering and humility as poverty. Only those who have experienced 
poverty understand the full meaning of this it is no wonder that man fears poverty through a long line of inherited experience man has learned for sure that some men cannot be trusted where where matters of money and earthly possessions are concerned this is the rather stinging in the worst part of it being that it is true the majority of marriages are motivated by the wealth possessed by one or both of the contracting parties it's no wonder therefore that the divorce courts are busy so eager is man to possess well that he will acquire it in whatever manner he can through legal matters if possible through other matter if necessary or expedient self analysis may disclose weaknesses which one does not like to acknowledge this form of examination is essential to all who demand of life more than mediocrity mediocrity and poverty remember as you check yourself point by point that you are both the court and the jury the procus prosecuting attorney attorney and the attorney for the defense and that you are plaintiff and the defendant also that you are on trial face the fact is hardly ask yourself definite question and demand direct replies when the examination is over you will know more about yourself if you do not feel that you can be impartial judge in this self examination call upon someone who knows you well to serve as judge while you cross examining yourself you are after the truth that it no matter at what, what cost even to it may temporarily embarrass you the majority of people if asked what they fear most would reply i fear nothing the reply would be inaccurate because few people realize that they are bound handicap wiped spiritually and physically through some form of fear so subtle and deeply seated in the emotion of fear that one may go through life burden with it never recognize its presence only a courageous analysis with this close the presence of this universal enemy when you begin such an analysis search deeply into your character here is a list of the symptoms for which you should you should look symptoms of the fear of poverty indifference commonly expressed through lack of ambition willingness to tolerate poverty acceptance of whatever compensation life may offer without protest mental and physical laziness lack of in- initiative imagination enthusiasm and self control indecision the habit of permitting others to do one's thinking staying on the fence doubts generally expressed through alibis and excuses designed to cover up explains why or apolog- apologize for one failure sometimes expressed in the form of envy of those who are successful or by criticizing them were usually expressed by finding fault with others a tendency to spend beyond one's income neglect of personal appearance is cowardly and proving pro proning intemperance in the use of alcohol alcoholic drink sometimes through the use of narcotics nervousness lack of poise self consciousness and lack of self reliance over caution the habit of looking for the negative side of every circumstance thinking and th- talking of possible failure instead of concentrating upon the means of succeeding knowing all the roads to disaster but never searching for the plans to avoid failure waiting for the right time to begin putting ideas and plans into action until the waiting becomes a permanent habit remembering those who have failed and forgetting those who have succeeded seeing the hole in the dog nut but overlooking the dog dog nut pessimism leading to indigestion poor elimination auto intoxication bad breath and bad disposition procrastination the habit of putting off until tomorrow that which 
should have been done last year spending enough time in creating alibis and excuses to have done the job this sentence is closely related to over caution doubt and worry refusal to accept responsibility when it come to avoid it willingness to compromise rather than put up a stiff fight Comp compromising with difficulties instead of harnessing and using them as tapping stones of ad advancement bargaining with life for a penny instead of defending prosperity opulence riches contentment and happiness planning what to do if and when overtaken by failure instead of burning all bridges and making retreat impossible weakness of an often total lack of self-confidence definiteness of purpose self-control initiative enthusiasm ambition thrift and sound reasoning ability expecting poverty instead of demanding riches associated with those who accept poverty instead of seeking the company of those who demand and receive riches money talks some will ask why did you write a book about money why media riches why why major riches in dollars alone some will believe and rightly so that there are other forms of riches more desirable than money yes there are riches which can not be major in terms of dollar but there are millions of people who will say give me all the money i need and i will find everything else i want the major reason why i wrote this book on how to get money is the fact that the world has but lately passed through on experience that the left millions of men and women paralyzed with the fear of poverty what this sort of fear does to ones was well described by west brook figler in the new york world telegram viz money is only calm shells or mental disc or scrubs of paper there are treasures of the heart and soul which money cannot buy but most people being broke or unable to keep this in mind and sustain their spirit when a man is down and out and on the street unable to get any job at all sometime something happens to his spirit which can be observed in the drop of his shoulder the set of his hat his walk and his gaze he cannot escape feeling of inferiority among people with regular employment even though he knows they are definitely not his equal in character intelligence or ability these people even his friends feels on the other hand a sense of superiority and regard him perhaps unconscious unconscious consciously as a casualty he may borrow for a time he not enough to carry on his on in his accustomed way and he cannot continue to borrow very long but borrowing in itself when a man is borrowing merely to live is a depressing experience and money lacks the power of earned money to re revive his spirit of course none of none of this applies to gums or habitual near do wells but only to one of normal ambition and self respect woman conceal despair woman is the same predicament must be different we somehow do not think of woman at all in considering the down and utters they are scars and the bread lines they really are seen begging on the street they are not recognized recognizable in crowd by the same plain signs which identify busted man of course i do not mean the shuffling hags of the city streets who are the opposite numbers of the confirmed male bums i mean reasonable young decent and intelligent women there must be many of them but their despair is not apparent maybe they kill themselves when a man is down and out he has time on his hand for brooding he may travel miles to see a man about a job and discover that the job is filled or that is one of those jobs with no base pay but only a 
commission on the sale of some useless kicknack which nobody would buy except out of pity turning that down he finds himself back on the street with nowhere to go but just anywhere so he walks and walks and he gazes into store windows at luxuries which are not from him feels inferior and gives way to people who stops to look with the active interest he wanders into the railroad station or put himself down in the library to ease his legs and soak up a little heat but that isn't looking for a job so he gets going again he may not know it but his aimlessness would give him away even the very lines of his figure did not he may be well dressed in the clothes left over from the days when he had a steady job but the clothes cannot disguise the drop money make difference he sees thousands of other people bookkeeper or clerk or chemist or wagon hands are busy at their work and envies them from the bottom of his soul they have their independence their self respect and manhood and he simply cannot convince himself that he is a good man too so he argue it out and arrive at a favorable verdict or after or <coughs> it is just money which makes this different in him with a little money he would be himself again some empowers some employers take the most shocking advantage of people who who are down and out the gentles hang out little colored cards offering miserable wages to busted men $12 a week $15 a week and $18 a week job is a plump and anyone with $25 a week to offer does not hang the job in front of an agency on a clerk card i have a want at clip from the local paper demanding a clerk a good clean pan man to take telephone order for a sandwich shop from 11 am to 2 pm for $8 a month and not $8 a week but $8 a month the ad say also state religion can you imagine the brutal f1 tree of anyone who demands a good clean pan man for 11 cents and are inquiring into the victim religion but that is what busted people are offered